Most people in the public eye have been stitched up from time to time by the media, but you seem to have been stitched up more than most. Well, yeah, I mean, like I've always said the difference between the Beano and the newspaper is three pence. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Gubber, and this is Vision Sport. Well, it's 30 years ago this week when I first set up shop as an independent filmmaker launching Vision Sport International. Back in the 90s, we pioneered the independent coverage of football matches in England, filming the matches the broadcasters didn't, providing in-house television and films for the home video market for football clubs from Newcastle to Plymouth, from Norwich to Manchester, from West Ham to Middlesbrough. And then in 1997, we launched Britain's first dedicated football club channel when we brought you Borough TV. We grew our audience on the back of three cup final appearances in two seasons for Brian Robson's team, a star-studded era for the Borough, featuring the likes of Janino, Ravinelli, Emerson, Merson, and many more, including the one and only Paul Gascoigne. Over the past three decades, we've built up a massive archive of footage and memories. And to celebrate our 30th anniversary here on this channel, I'm going to share with you some rare and exclusive content, much of which has never been seen before. So please subscribe, like, ring that bell and share the official links to some of our content. And to get us underway, we're going to start with the Gaza collection. So here's a brief taste of some of the content you'll find on this channel. Oh, right. Paul, uh, Glenn says perhaps you might have been misunderstood in the past. Do, do you perhaps go along with that? Um, and what weird? Just perhaps, I don't know, the, the, the way that uh, people perceive you. Well, I, I, I just say I would, give me, don't really have much option really because, hey, I said, wherever I go, I'm always getting followed off the press. Obviously, I've been places where I've, I've been, like club where I haven't been. Um, so I just feel like. You know, I spent the last couple of years just explaining to managers that look, I didn't do that, I hadn't been there. And at the moment, I've just just kept in, stayed in. Never really went out. Are you enjoying this period of your career at the moment? Um, I'm enjoying my football, yeah. I'm not enjoying really being this trap as much. Um, but uh, my football, yeah, I'm enjoying my football, definitely. What advice would you give to the younger members of the England squad at the moment as a World Cup approaches? Um, well. You know, the, uh, we have got some very young, talented players, without a doubt. Um, I played in the World Cup when I was young, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. When you're young, if you want to be a footballer, and then your next one is you want to play in the World Cup. Um, like I said, there's a squad of 22 will be gone, um, and Glenn said there's still places um, for people to come into it. Um, so, you know, to the, to the young kids, just keep on playing the way they are. And uh, come next next season, or come the end of next season, we'll see what the squad is. You're an elder statesman now. You'll be able to help the young ones get through this, yeah? Not as much because they're, I'm trying to get their keep their places. You see, I mean they're at the right place. So, uh, but now the, the young kids, my advice is that you know it's a, the World Cup is all the 1990 was the last time we were there, um, and I really enjoyed my time there. Um, but they like said we've got some very talented young kids and. Uh, there's no doubt that Glenn will be taking um, most of them to the World Cup. I've left an ambitious club to come to an ambitious club. Um, both chairmen are willing to spend money, um, plans for the future, and uh, the both of them got good sets of lads. Rangers were like a family to me. There's not many bigger clubs than Rangers as far as I'm concerned. How high would you place an old fun game in the atmosphere? <sighs> you, you have to witness it. Um, Fortunately, me, touch wood. Um, I played in 11 and uh, was unbeaten in them, so it was good, a couple of goals, but the, the atmosphere is is. Uh, is that horrific. the best you've ever experienced? Or no, Latin and Roma is something else as well, I is mean, it? you're looking at what, they're 50,000, their atmosphere, Latin Roma was 100,000, um, but for atmosphere and singing and trying to outdo each other and the hatred, that's just that like, that you just take track, some beating. Yeah, you just take some beating. Is that right, you had several threats against you in Glasgow? A couple of times, no, yeah. I read in the press. Yeah, a couple of times, just, you know, um, 
Have you my experienced majesty. that before? Um, I've had it before, yeah. I was getting letters and death threats in there. They can be a bit worrying, but like I said, they're, they're wor not the worst one, but I remember just going to the chain ground, got my car, and I was just walking along, and a guy just stopped his car, put his head out the window, and just said, Watch yourself, guys, I'm going to slit your throat. Um, I didn't actually train too well that day, to be fair. I actually missed out on about four years of international soccer through injury. I worked out maybe, you're talking about 20 games, 30 games in that time, so I reckon I could have got 85. I would have hopefully been on about 85 caps, especially with World Cup coming up in friendlies. Um, shame because I think I could have. You know, kept myself right in good condition, reached 100 caps, but um, it's always nice to play for your country. I passed the 50 mark, which is nice, um, and um, my aim is just try and stay fit, um, stay fit and do the business for Middlesbrough and England. You scored a terrific goal against Scotland in the European Championships. Um, you know, what kind of reception did you get when you returned to Ibrox? Because there was a couple of Rangers players playing that day. 50-50. Um, Right. Um, the lads um, got a lot of banter before, a stick beforehand, but afterwards, when I got back, um, every photo that was sent through the post to sign, um, I actually put them above Andy Gorham's peg first right. before um, <coughs> signing them and sending them off. So I do apologise to some of the people that didn't get the photos <laughs> back because Andy Gorham ripped them to shreds. <laughs> <laughs>